Welcome to Appliant Tech Tutorial. Um, this is part two of this board. This is a, a board for a top loader washing machine um, from DeFi. The model number of the machine is DTL149. Um, on part one of this board, I, I explained the protection circuit and I explain how I figured that um, this is live and that this is neutral. So please go and watch the video if you haven't watched the video as we continue to part two. Before we explain everything on part two, um, this is the block diagram of the board that I've drawn there. What you see here is drawn there and what you see here is drawn there. So. I just told, I just decided to uh, let you know in advance that here um, we are powering the motor. This board is powering the motor. Here is powering the pump motor. And here on this pin, it's powering the drain motor. Um, the drain motor um, is the motor um, that unbreak the tab when we want to spin the machine when we want to rinse should uh, the machine have a function of um, moving the tab when it's rinsing and this one is the inlet for cold so this machine um, has two inlet pipes or two inlet solar node valves so what it does uh, it has three sorry the other one will go where there is soap during the time when the machine is washing it then has another inlet for rinsing so this one goes where the softener is and take the softener during the rinsing moment or during the rinsing time so the, the this is the one that will go to to the inlet solenoid valve of the softener and this one will go to the inlet of uh the hot water when you decide to use or you're using it, um, the inlet for hot water and this one <coughs> uh, is the door so um, whenever the door is open, this one will have an open circuit and the machine will display DE um, telling the user that um, the door is open. So that one, the last one there, is for the pressure switch, this one. So that's it on these things. So now on part two, we will be talking about the motor. Um, when the machine motor is not running on this one we'll assume that the motor is running is not running sorry because if the motor is running um you will get to 20 year um if you watched the video that i made about a a twin tap timer you would know that um, a motor of the washing machine is like this it is two windings um and they they will be neutral connected so the motor comes with three wires one wire will be for neutral and the other wire will go to the cap and the other wire will be will be fed from the timer and the other one will be fed for the time from the timer but on this case we're not using the timer we are using this control board so what happens is this control board powers the motor. So um, what we know also about the motor of the washing machine, we know that um, we, we will put 230 there, cut that 230 and put that 230 on this side. During that time when, that, when 230 is on this side, a motor will run on this direction. I'm just making an example. Maybe it will run on that direction. So let's say it runs on this direction when we put 230 here. 
after some seconds we cut that 280 and put this 280 here the motor will change direction so that's the reason why the motor of the washing machine comes with three wires it's because um, the, the washing machine must change direction so that it will wash clothes proper so this timer I mean this board does the very same thing that the twin tape wash timer does so it gives us electricity there 230 stops and put that 230 on this side stops and put it on the other side so the machine goes clockwise and anti-clockwise so should we measure between neutral and here we get 230 and 230 disappears for some seconds and comes back we come here 230 is available for some seconds uh, and disappears then comes back but the motor is not running everything would be easy on that case we would know that it's not the board that is faulty it's either the motor or the cap or the wiring from the pc port to the motor but now let's say that um the motor is not running and when we measure there we get nothing so what do we do where do we start okay we know that the motor receives power from here and here so what we will do is we will flip this thing around and try to check where is our motor fed so we can see that these are the two wires where our motor is being fed so okay these are the two places where our motor is being fed so where do we get uh what we're supposed to be getting here we can see that we are getting it from here we've got this component and we've got that component so again we've got this component and we've got that component so what we should do now we must flip this thing around why it's very important to know this is because it's not that easy for us to get um the the second diagram of these washing machines so when we don't have or we we're not getting these circuit diagrams we need to make our own circuit diagrams or we need to understand how does these boards work so when we flip this thing up this component that we saw that is fitting here is this one and it's or here it's this one so there was another component connected if you look down there it will be the it's the resistor and the resistor so okay sorry it's not the resistor it's this cap the non polarized cap and this cap so what is this and what is that these are the triacs um a motor needs to daddy which is alternating current so um triacs are used in washing machines for switching on and off the motor so a triac is the good component to be used since it's very good in switching of ac so what i did is uh, i draw this thing so this is where we this is here so here this component um, this is the component so that's the non-polarized cap and here that is our triac so this is our triac so that wire comes and goes to terminal main terminal number two of the triac so um if we get nothing here we either have a fault on this cap or on this triac so you need to know how to test the components so if you see that the cap is right in most cases when the caps or the capacitors have problem um, you will see them they they got patched or they explode something like that it's easy to see them but that's not always the case sometimes you need to remove the component and test it um, with your multimeter so let's say um that is right then we need to come to the triac and test it 
So there are many videos on the on the internet that are telling are telling us how to test this thing. So if you know how a triad works, if you know how a triad works, you'd know that we need to put um, something to the gate um, for us to allow electricity to to pass um, through this terminal. So. So if you you like to check these things live, um, you would measure here and check if you are gay, is there electricity going through the gate to trigger the triac so that it would switch on. So if you get something here and the triac is not supplying us, so you know that um, you, 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 you will be measuring between neutral and live. So neutral, then you take your lead and you put to the gate to see if is there any AC going through the gate. Um, so if there is no voltage that is going through the gate, then the fault finding continues. Um, you would follow it where the gate is powered, then there are components and there is this component. Um, so you check after this resistor, I mean before this resistor, if there is electricity coming, if there is no electricity coming, then the fault finding continues. What I like about um, the triacs that are being used to, to control the motor, they have the same drawings. Um, I mean, they have the yes the, the 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 circuits are the same so where does that one go and where does this one go so if you look carefully to this board you would see that um the gate is being triggered by this ic so this ic is the one that is responsible for giving us a signal to the gate so what the IC does, it will give us a signal to this gate for a certain period of time to switch that one off. It will then um, stop everything and give the signal to this one to switch one, this one off. If you remember how what I said before, during that one, the motor might be spinning clockwise. During this one, the motor will be anti-clockwise. So that's what this IC does. So should the problem be here, there is nothing we can do. We need to buy the new board. There are videos that are showing us on the on YouTube how to remove and replace this thing, but um, my problem as an appliance technician is where to get this thing. And even if I would get this thing, to be honest with you, I won't be able to solder this thing to this board. So from the way these boards are made, it's clear that they don't want us to fix them. But when the fault um, is not much, fix them. Let's say it's the triac you, you, on your fault finding you saw that um, there is a signal to the triac, but the triac is not switching on. And for, for, and for a certain time, there is uh, another signal for this triac, and the triac is not switching on. So on, on that case, you would have to remove both triacs and put new triacs. In some cases, you would find out that one triac is blown. So the machine would spin in one direction and um, later on another direction. So on that case, the fault will be on one triac. Um, I think I'm done for part two where we were discussing the motor. Um, on another video, we'll be discussing, I think, the, the pump and the drain motor. Um, thank you. Keep well.